Hello, everyone. We're uh, very excited to have Natron back. Uh, he's fun. Um, brings back a lot of great memories. We showed uh, a video of, of highlights of him to the team yesterday, and they were oohing and eyeing and at 250 pounds out running people and running over people. And really and truly, Carolina football might not be what it is today without so many guys like him, but specifically him because he was the guy that got us started. And, and he was the one that, that uh, propelled us into the, the first Peach Bowl with Mississippi State that we won. And, and we were pretty good after that. So it's, it's so great to have him back and see him out on the field. And, and um, uh, so many of these young people, too, look up to him. And um, they remember him some, but their parents sure remember him. And, and he's uh, a name that will forever be in, in, in our history. Um, Jeremy went over the injury report with you. Uh, some of those guys will be limited, but they'll still get a lot of work this spring, like an A.J. Beatty uh, snapping and, and doing some drills. So uh, we, we feel good about that. The first day of practice was fun. Uh, in the off season. these guys have had more energy than any team I've been around, and they, they compete with each other, and they have fun with each other, and practice was like that today. They were flying around. Uh, they had a lot of uh, speed. We're a better looking team than we've been since we've been here. We're bigger, uh, we're faster. Um, we, we've got a lot of skill, but, but big bodies up front, especially in that, that defensive line, uh, look good. And, and that should help us uh, in the fourth quarter of those games like A&M and, and um, Notre Dame where we got beaten down some and, and the offense didn't uh, take care of business in the third and fourth quarters and left the defense out there too much. But uh, you can't learn to play football without pads. We know that. They'll look different on Saturday. Uh, but for a first day, it was as good as it, it could possibly be. And even some of the, the newcomers, when you look at them, we would recruit every one of them again at this point. Uh, they're athletic. Uh, they, they were excited today. I asked a couple of them, and they said, man, it's fast out here. Just going faster. But those young guys didn't have a spring practice last year, and they didn't have a fall. So they haven't played football for a year. So... Uh, things went very, very fast for them. Um, the biggest goal of, of uh, spring practice is what it would have been last year, and that's try to develop a two deep where there's no drop-off. And we can have somebody coming in that looks just like the one that's playing. And, and it doesn't matter. Hopefully we'll end up being able to, to rotate uh, three defensive lines, and they'll all look alike, and we can play more linebackers and and, <clears throat> excuse me, we can play six or uh, eight secondary guys. So uh, that's, our, that's our goal. We've got a lot of uh, individual goals for each side of the ball, all three phases. But the number one goal is that we want to come out of this uh, being a team that, that uh, is not uh, devastated by injuries and is, does not get tired and worn out in the fourth quarter. And, and that's the, the, the biggest thing. Uh, defensive goals would be tackle better, which is something everybody's working on all the time. Uh, force more turnovers. We, we haven't forced the turnovers that we'd like to and in the two years we've been here. And when you get better players and you put more pressure on the quarterback, hopefully we'll start doing better in that area. We want to play better the last five minutes of the half. Uh, we'd like to get more sacks by individuals instead of schemes because so many of our schemes, uh, our sacks have been because we've developed a scheme to get there, not because we beat somebody one-on-one. -on -one. So that's a, a huge emphasis, and, and like I just said, uh, uh, be good in the fourth quarter. In, in the four games we lost, uh, people ran the ball against us, and we've got to play more people and, and have better depth so we don't get tired and worn down in that fourth quarter. Offensive goals are we want fewer sacks, and, and uh, we want to play better in, in the fourth quarter. Come out better to start the third quarter, but play better in the fourth quarter in that Notre Dame game. And, and, and the game against uh, A&M where we weren't out there enough and, and allowed them to, to make more yards. Um, and we also want to uh, do a better job in the red zone and short yardage, the, that uh, third and four, fourth and two uh, area. We, we had great improvement this year in that area, but we, we still need to continue to, to grow and, and obviously continue to take care of the ball because we've done a, an outstanding job of that the, the last couple of years. Uh, goals for special teams is we want to be the best special teams in the country. And it's one of the reasons we, we hired Larry Porter and, and promoted him to uh, assistant 
special teams coach because of, he's the full-time special teams coach at Auburn. So we have two full-time special team coaches on our staff, and um, we may be one of the few universities that, that practice special teams a lot today in the first day of spring practice. So that's an area we've got to continue to grow and, and win some games in. Uh, we've been okay. Uh, we've been good at times. We've been bad at times. But, but more than not, we end up in the, in the middle of the pack with the, the conference, and, and we want to be in the upper part of the, the, the nation. So uh, we, we've really got to do an outstanding job in that area, especially on punt, punt block and punt return, because we haven't been good at block, punt blocks at all. Um, and, and we've been uh, good and bad on returns, but a lot of that was because Daz Newsom was a really good returner, uh, and he made some of those yards on his own. Uh, so we, we do want to win some games on, because of our special teams. Um, it is nice to have spring practice after not having one last year. I think that you appreciate it much more when you don't have it. Uh, we all probably took it for granted and said, ah, we've got 15 days, we'll be fine. And now we, we saw the lack of development uh, in so many areas with those guys last year. Uh, we saw the off-season program um, was decimated because guys had to be at home and, and uh, they had to figure out ways to work out and, and run and they didn't have their nutritionist. And, and we, we're so good in all those areas with Coach Hess and, and Kelsey Gums that, that they're really good at what they do. So our guys missed them uh, when they went home and, and – uh, Luke Ross, our trainer, uh, those guys have handled COVID so well. So uh, we do feel like that uh, that was one of the reasons the players probably had so much fun today. It's, it's good for them to get back uh, on the field. Uh, the mask and the, the COVID guidelines are, are more normal to them now than they were uh, even when we started in August or when we started back in June. So they just think that's the norm now. They wear their mask and, and they understand it and they go about their business. But uh, I do think that's one of the reasons that uh, we had so much fun today is they really missed it. The coaches missed it, and it was so much fun to be back out there together and, and working on, on football to be a little bit more normal. Uh, we moved spring practice back two weeks last year, and it ended up biting us because we, uh, we, we lost our two weeks because of COVID. Uh, but we have... 13 new guys in, 12 early enrollees, and uh, both uh, Brian Hess and Kelsey, our nutritionists, felt like that an extra two weeks would give them so much more energy and strength going into spring practice, and, and some of these young guys are going to play. So we wanted to have an opportunity to get them as strong and their bodies in the best shape before we started, uh, and, and that's why we've moved it back for two weeks, and, and we feel like it's, it's worth it. Uh, it was smart. Like I said, it, it bit us last year. Uh, but also, I think every day we learn more about COVID. So we wanted to move it back in hopes that there would be more vaccines and, and there would be more people to, to understand uh, guidelines, and they might loosen up some as, as we continue to practice. Um, we start in shorts and you move to shells, then pads. Uh, your first two, you, you required the first two practices in spring be in shorts. Uh, you've got to get them to go full speed, but they've got to stay on their feet. You can't have guys diving for balls and, and, and guys competing um, is, is very important, but not getting hurt. Uh, so you've, you've got to be 100%, but stay on your feet. And, and our guys did a good job of that today. Uh, we'll have shorts again on Thursday, and then we'll move to shells this Saturday. Uh, the, the first two are in the indoor area, and Saturday's practice will be at the uh, – uh, in the stadium. Um, progress in the off season. Um, I think that Coach Hess feels like uh, uh, he was able to keep his staff uh, another year, which is really good too, but he feels like that we've made great strides. Uh, we'll get Jeremy to get you the body weights because some have, have uh, gained some of the weight, needed weight, some have lost some weight, uh, but we look fit today and we look strong and we look confident. And, and I do think that Brian Hess is is one of the best at what he does. And I had never been around the, the nutrition program like it is uh, today and like it is here. We had a nutritionist at Texas in the end, and, and we did some good things. But uh, Kelsey and her staff are on these guys every day. They look at every meal they eat. They basically grade it to make sure they're eating the proper foods. 
and they change who they are with their confidence in their bodies and and a, a lot of our bodies look much better now than uh, than they did uh, even after the season. Uh, our 13 newcomers, um, we, we would take all 12 of the guys that we, we signed again. Uh, again, they haven't been in pads yet, but in watching them run and jump and lift and compete, um, all of them, I, I can see why we took. And you think you know, but you never know till till they get here. And what we've told them to do is is learn what to do first. You've got to learn how to practice in college. It's different. And, and you've got to learn your assignments, and, and that's different. And the game moves so much faster. So don't come in here worried about finding a spot. Learn what to do. And then after you learn what to do, you can start competing for a job. But we've asked our older guys to uh, really help uh, the, uh, the younger guys with how to practice and we, we get up at, at 5 to, to get over here for 6.30 meetings, have a buddy system, and make sure you get up. You've got to learn to go to bed early. And all the guys were on time this morning. In fact, they were early, and I thought that was a great sign to get started with. But, uh, and we'll sit down and, and have individual meetings with all the young ones uh, after this practice this morning just to see how they did and how they felt. And I asked a number of them walking off the field, and every one of them said it was so much fun, but, man, it was fast. It was just fast. It's uh, so much faster than we're used to, and, and, and that was fun to, to see that smile on their face. Um, effectively handling and dealing with expectations. Um, I love expectations. Uh, that's, that's what we want. We, we want everybody to want to win every game and expect to win every game. We said that the first year. It probably wasn't very realistic, but uh, we got in some, some games where we had chances to win and we didn't finish, and now we've got to finish those. Um, are we going to win every game always? Uh, you, you would like to say so, but nobody does usually. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do. We, we obviously lost 4,000 yards on offense and four guys, uh, five guys, uh, four guys that will be drafted on offense and one on, on defense here pretty soon. So you lose your leading tackler on defense and, and a lot of leadership. You lose two of the best running backs to ever play here, and one of the best receivers to ever play, really two, with what Daz did. Um, you're, you got some holes to fill. So the good thing is our expectations are very high, our standards set very high, and at the same time, the guys understand we got holes to fill. So we, that's what spring practice is for. That's what our preseason will be for, and, and we've got to do a great job in those areas. Uh, also, leadership. Um, you, you, we're, we're at the point right now where I've asked our coaches to identify their leaders because it changes every year. Identify the leaders in each unit. And, and then who are the best leaders on our team and who are the best leaders in each unit and why. And then we've got to sit down with those guys and really challenge them uh, to lead the team because the, the player-led teams are the best teams. We all know that. And we're not on the field with them. We're, we're on that sideline. So when they're out there, they have to make a lot of those decisions themselves. So we're working really, really hard on leaders and leadership uh, this spring as well. Um, the only clarification we've got on roster management is the, the academic rule that the NCAA put forth that any of your guys that want to can participate in activities this summer without going to school. So we can pay for their food, we can pay for their rooms, and they don't have to enroll in classes. Now, for our younger guys, that will not be an option because we want them to stay on course for their degree. For the older guys, especially the super seniors, if a guy like Garrett Walston is, is in great shape and, and has finished school and he just needs to have some classes to get through until he gets through with the season next year, he might decide with his academic counselor, it'll be their decision completely, that he would not go to summer classes, but he would still be in summer workouts. If you're not enrolled, you can't have cost of attendance because you have to attend before you can have cost of attendance. So that's the other decision the young guys have to make. If I'm not going to school, but I'm participating in workouts, I will not get cost of attendance. So it will cost them some of their scholarship check uh, this summer. Uh, the spring game, uh, right now, we have our spring game planned for April 24th at 3 o'clock. Uh, it's scheduled to be on uh, ACC Network. 
Uh, we're working with the state to see what kind of uh, uh, fan turnout we can have. A lot can happen in, in a, a month. Um, so uh, we feel good about uh, the opportunity to have some fans there, but we will not know until later um, when a decision is made by the state and the county of uh, what type of attendance uh, that we could possibly have. Uh, but we are working with their guidelines. Uh, right now with COVID, uh, we've got uh, our players are having two tests a week. <clears throat> Excuse me, and nothing has changed since uh, last August. Uh, they still have to be negative. Uh, we still check temperatures every day when we walk in the building. Uh, if you have any symptoms, you're asked to stay at home. And we had very, very few um, situations where we had young people get the flu. In fact, I'm not sure we had any. And that's probably because we washed our hands more and we social distanced more and we wore a mask more. Uh, but, but again, it's, it's, it's who we are. And as our players start getting vaccines and our staff continues to get vaccines, uh, I'm sure that we will get new guidelines uh, because you've got to look at what it means if all of your staff except two have been vaccinated. Does that mean you still can't have a staff meeting without masks or does that mean those two would be on Zoom? What does it mean? What does it mean if 75% uh, of your team gets vaccinated but you've got the 25% that will be in those same meetings? Do the guys who have been vaccinated and, and uh, cleared of, of that time uh, the, the, after the, the two vaccinations that they, they're, they're cleared, but will they still have to wear masks if there are other people who decided not to get the vaccination? So uh, all of that's ahead for us. Uh, we, we don't have those answers at this time, uh, but we're being very, very honest with our players and our coaches and our staff, trying to get them as much information uh, through doctors and video uh, about the vaccine so they can make the decisions themselves. Um, the contracts were released for our, our 10 full-time coaches yesterday. I'm very proud that all of them have uh, three-year contracts. Uh, my contract was rolled over for another year and I appreciate uh, Bubba uh, and uh, uh, Kevin Gustowitz, uh, our chancellor, our, our board of trustees, our board of governors for trusting us in that manner. A lot of people don't do that. And a lot of people will not give uh, all of their assistant coaches three years. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, very proud that we've been able to get them. And I'm proud that they feel like that we're doing a good enough job uh, that they want us to keep uh, going as we are and continue to, to roll my contract over uh, because that is very rare. And it shows a lot of stability uh, from our university, our, our, our boards of, of governance with the Board of Governors and the trustees, as well as uh, uh, Bubba uh, and our Rams Club board. Uh, it shows that, that they believe in what we're doing and, and want to keep these guys here. Uh, Lonnie Galloway does a lot of things to help me um, outside of the, the field, just the football field, and Tim Brewster did that when he got here. Uh, we didn't have anybody for a while, but... Uh, um, if there's something I need done, a lot of times I'll call Lonnie and, and the coordinators are overloaded, uh, all three of them. So I'll call Lonnie and say, can you get this done for me? He, he works with uh, Jason Freeman on equipment. He works with the numbers. Uh, he, does the, he, he decides what we wear at practice and he and the staff decide what we wear at the game. So uh, he's very involved with our leadership committee and, um, and I, I trust Lonnie and I, I, Lonnie's done a great job for us. So I was proud to, to name him as the uh, assistant head coach. And then uh, Larry Porter, um, we, we need help in our special teams to bring in a, a full-time special teams coach and have two is really cool. Uh, so I, I made Larry the assistant special teams coordinator. It also gives you an opportunity if Javon ever left that Larry would, would be there or vice versa. And Larry's gonna handle kickoff return for the offense and he's gonna work with Stacy Searles on uh, the extra point and field goal uh, on offense. So that'll take some of the pressure off Javon and he and Tim Cross will have more time uh, to work with, the, uh, uh, with pass rush because we've got to do a better job uh, of getting more pressure uh, with our front three or front four. Questions? All right, thanks coach. We will begin with CL Brown. Go ahead, CL. 
Yeah, Mac, I was curious, you know, in, in the elevated expectations you have for this team, how, in what ways do you see yourself maybe demanding more or pushing them harder in the spring? So, you know, I don't think we can demand more or push them harder because we've done that for two years. I think they see the opportunity to take another step. And that's what we're constantly talking about. We've talked a lot about uh, the, the um, NCAA basketball tournament. How does uh, the expectation of someone who is not very good beat someone who is supposed to be really good? Was, was the fact that we weren't sure the, the team that was not publicized very much was as good as they were, or were we not as ready to play? So we talk to our team every day about teachable moments. We had competition in the off season, and, and part of that competition was eating the right meal every day, and that was checked by the nutritionist. Part of that was making sure that you never miss a tutoring session, you never miss a class, you're never late. And teams got upgraded because of the things they did, and they, they got downgraded. Couldn't miss a workout, couldn't be late, uh, had to, to meet the standard of your workout. And we had a team that, that pulled together at the end, and it was led by Brian Anderson, and and they got on a text chain and they thought it was really serious and they challenged each other and, and they ended up winning the competition. And, and we told the guys this morning, that's no different than our team. You became accountable. You did the little things to do everything right to win. And that's what we've got to do, CL. Our, our job is not to, quote, just try to win all the games. Our job is to be as good as we can be. And if we're as good as we can be and it's not good enough, then, then we're okay. We'll, we'll keep working to recruit better. We'll coach harder. We'll do better. But our job is to be as good as we can possibly be. And I thought uh, today, understanding first day of, of spring practice, understanding shorts, uh, this was the best, best practice I've been around since we've been here. And hopefully that will continue. And I thought it was because of what you said. They understand that there's a different expectation. You, we, we talked about this morning, our seniors won three games. Our seniors won two games. Our seniors won seven games. Our seniors won eight games. And last year when we beat Miami, we played like a top ten team. And then we didn't play as well in the bowl game. So uh, I've told them we're, we're sniffing around being a top ten team, but we've got to do it consistently. And then people get mad when you lose to Virginia, get mad when you lose to Florida State. We're at a point now where people are going to get mad if we lose to anybody. And that's okay. I do too. The players do too. We want to win every game. So um, I, I, think, I think it's fine that we all expect to win, and if, if not, we're disappointed. All right, let's go over to Andrew Jones. Hey, Coach. Kind of staying on what CL was asking, uh, I asked uh, Sam a little while ago, now that the, uh, that the expectations are higher and you guys, the, the program has evolved to where it is now, if your message has changed, you said the message hasn't changed, but I'm asking you, do you deliver the message a little bit differently now? And is that kind of in concert with what you were just saying a few minutes ago? It's a, it's a good question again, Andrew. Like CLs, I don't think I deliver the message differently. I think they listen differently. When I walked in here and they'd won two games and I said, we're going to, we're, we're, our goal is to win every game. I think they looked at me like, yeah, well, wait till you see us. We're not very good. Uh, and now they feel like they are good. And they saw opportunities in that Notre Dame game where we could have finished better. Even with, uh, with the guys that didn't play in the bowl game, they saw opportunities to win the bowl game uh, against five and number five and number four. So I, I think their mentality is different. Our mentality is the same. You know, when, when Larry Porter was talking to Rick Steinbacher about his new job, he said, what kind of bowl bonus do you get for college football playoffs and national championship? And, and I thought that was, a good, that was a good question. So uh, I, I just think we're at a different point mentally. And we understand we've got a hard opening game at Virginia Tech, so nothing's going to be easy. And we've gotten so much publicity that, that people – uh, are going to circle us, and, and we've got to beat Carolina. It's the ABCs again, like we had here before. It's anybody but Carolina, uh, but that's a good thing. But I, I do feel like the message is the same, but I think they're listening to it differently. And, and they feel like it's real now. We have a chance. I'm not sure they felt like it was real that first year, and I think that's one of the reasons we lost some close games. Okay, J.B. Ricks, go ahead. 
Hey, Coach, good to see you again. Um, I, I want to go back to the uh, COVID protocols and, you know, the experience that you guys gained off of 2020 and how all that, how everything went down. Coming into the 2021 season, d- do you feel like, you know, you guys have more of a comfort level with, with this COVID situation and, and, and how much will it benefit you guys uh, for a season full of expectations? Uh, thank you, JB. I, I, I do think that we, we get it. We know it's real. We know it's still out there. You see a, a, about the time you think we're getting better and the numbers are getting better, VCU has to cancel a, a, a game that, that, that one of the biggest in their lives against Oregon. And, and then you see lots of kids on spring break and not going by the guidelines. And you, you know that there's some parties on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so we, we continue to talk to our guys about it's real and it's still out there. And, and if you haven't had a positive, you, you need to make sure that you wear your mask and you, uh, you, you do keep social distancing. And, and I'm wa- washing my hands now uh, still a bunch every day, and I've never done it like I am now. And, and I think, we're, I think our, all of our mentality is going to change a little bit. I don't like a mask, but I don't mind wearing it now. I forget I've got it on some because we've had it on so much. Uh, but I, I also told them that you, if you watch a, a VCU who's in the bubble, making sure they do everything right because they want to play in a playoff game, uh, have positives and can't play, uh, I don't want us to stop spring practice. So you, you act like we're in the fall. The, we've got to treat these spring practices every day like they're precious and as important as they, they were for practices in the fall because we didn't have them last year, and we need them, and we want them. And, and I don't want you either, I don't want you to have a positive for lots of reasons. We don't want anybody sick. But also with a positive comes usually contact tracing for five or six more, and those guys would miss now. Um, if, if you're contact tracing, our rule is still 14 days. And if you're uh, quarantine. For that, it's 14 days. But if you're isolated because you had a positive, it's still 10 days and a, a heart test before you can go back to work. So either way, you're missing a huge chunk of spring practice if you get a positive. So, uh, JB, we're staying on them every minute of every day. I've, I've started practice out today. Either get your helmet on or pull your mask up. One of the two. And, and that's just part of, I think it's part of the modern day routine till we see where these vaccines are going to take us. Okay, Dina King, go ahead. Hey, Coach. There's been a lot of coaching turnover, and you, you've been lucky. You've not had to do that. A lot of the guys that came in with you three years ago, uh, how important is it to have that solid group for continuity in the program? Uh, great to see you, Dina, and, and um, thanks for all you do for the high school kids and coaches, especially with uh, – all this, uh, the COVID out there, the camps you guys do, and it, it, it really helps these kids at a time where they, they need help because 22s and 23s are really in a bind with, with being evaluated. It's just a hard deal. Uh, I feel so fortunate, D- Dina, that we've, we've got a lot of coaches that are still here. And, and you, you like having some new ideas, so I don't mind a coach leaving every now and then. But you don't need mass exodus every year, and, and you're trying to replace them all. And I'm really proud that the guys stay. It tells me that they think we've got a chance to be good. They like the way we're recruiting. They like Chapel Hill. They like our kids um, because these guys get offered a, a, a bunch of jobs every year. So I'm, I'm proud that they stayed. And I thought one of the things that really hurt Coach Fedora is he hired some really good coaches, and a lot of them left. Um, and, and that's why uh, I'm proud that Bubba's helped us upgrade the salaries uh, to a point now that we are competitive uh, with the top 15 in the country, and, and that gives us a chance to keep them. They're, they're not going to make lateral moves, I don't think, right now. Uh, they would only make a move that they feel like would be for a head coaching job or a coordinator's job if they're not, or if, if they thought uh, there were some reasons, like um, uh, Robert Gillespie really wants to be a pro coach at some point, and and. Nick hired two offensive guys for the NFL, and he thought that would be a great experience for him, and I totally got that, and it was 75 miles from home. So uh, I want our guys to stay if it's best for them to stay, but I want to make it where it's best for them to stay. 
I want this to be a great place to coach where they enjoy it. Thank you, Coach. That means a lot to me. Thank you for those comments. Thank you. Okay, Greg Barnes, go ahead. Hey, Matt. When we talked to Sam earlier, he was talking about an emphasis for him is in limiting the sacks that, that have kind of plagued the program the last two years. From your perspective, what's the, the balancing act there? Because he, he's kind of a gunslinger type guy who makes explosive plays a lot. So you don't want to neuter that. But at the same time, you do need to scale back those sacks. How do you balance that as a coaching staff? I, I, it's a great point, Greg. And we've talked about it a lot. And um, Phil Longo and, and Sam work on it every day. Uh, we, we've talked about it with the offensive line, with Stacy and, and with uh, uh, our tight ends, John Lilly, about uh, getting the ball out of the hand faster. And, and we can't score every time we, we throw the ball. We, we've got to take what's there. Uh, and I thought Sam did a much better job of that as the year continued last year than he did the first year. And I think some of it is Sam's so strong. And in high school, he never went down, so he kept competing and fighting, and he could stay alive long enough to make a play. And he's playing against much better players now. And, and Sam wants us to win all the games next year, and he wants to be a great pro player. And, and uh, he can help us do both of those. But he wants to do those things. So I think we'll see an improvement in that area uh, for sure. And, and that'll help, you know, some of the sacks were running back not blocking well. Some of the sacks were a tight end giving up a, a sack. So the offensive line always gets the brunt of it, but some of it is our quarterback's holding the ball too long. Uh, so we're constantly uh, reevaluating what we're not doing well and, and trying to improve it. And, and that's one of the main goals for the spring. It's funny, you're... Uh, here I am, I'm, we're trying to get sacks from the defense and we're trying to protect better from the offense. So uh, when we get a sack, I'm mad at the offense, but happy with the defense. And when we don't get sacks, I'm mad at the defense for not being able to, able to get there and, and happy with the offense. So the head coach is never happy leaving practice when you're practicing against each other. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ross Martin, go ahead. Hey, Coach Brown, you mentioned how um, everyone was talking about UNC football last year. And really, since you've gotten back, the coverage of UNC football has increased. And obviously, as the team has improved, it's, it's gotten more and more. And then you do stuff on ESPN all the time. I feel like every other day, it's a radio interview, especially during the season. So I was wondering your approach to, uh, I guess, publicizing the, the, the program and getting more eyes and, and ears on the program and kind of how you've plan that out and approached um, not just local media, but national media and kind of building this brand of UNC football that you've certainly um, created and increased since you got here. Well, but thank you, Ross. Um, I, I really feel like the, the more publicity uh, that's positive that we get for our program, the better, because it, it helps recruiting. It helps ticket sales. Um, and I want us to be relevant. And I want people to be talking about us. And um, I, like I said, I want those expectations to be high. Somebody texted me yesterday and said, you know, gosh, they've got you rated seventh. That's way too high. I said, you know what? I don't care. I, I, wanna, I, I want our players to feel that and see that and dream that and, and, and want to be a top ten team. And, and in watching with, um, with my, my five years with, with ESPN ABC, Ross, I, I really felt like I learned a lot that people do watch. And, and uh, Jeremy Sharp and our communications team, uh, Billy High, uh, Becca, uh, they've done an unbelievable job of changing the, the perception of our program through social media. And our social media is different. You know, it's, 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 it's out there. And, and since it is, there's some really positive things in our lives about social media, and there's some that, that are probably tougher for us. And, and right now there's a lot of anger out there and a lot of disappointed people, whether it's because of deaths or, or people losing their jobs or, they lose or they've lost their house or their children are hungry. And um, so we, we've talked to the players about managing social media. We talked to them about the young player at Ohio State that had some, some really bad criticism on social media leaving the other day. And we've told them, understand what it is. If, if, you, if you love every positive thing that's said about you, then you're going to hurt for every negative thing that's said about you. So take it for what it is. You don't know a lot of the people that are talking about you move forward. But 
um, I've always felt like that uh, uh, we've got to be honest with what we put out there, uh, but we want to be uh, a cool program. We want to be a place that our, our fans, uh, our faculty, our administration, our students are really proud of. And, and we want to be a place where recruits want to come. And you can't do that without forward thinking and, and, and putting your stuff out. So I'm sure I, I haven't seen it, but this morning, uh, Jeremy and, and uh, Matt Fetter, they'll, they'll have pictures and videos of, of practice. Um, that he always, if I've got some cool shoes on and Jordan Brand gives us a lot of cool shoes, he always wants to tweet them and put them out there. And it's amazing how much the kids love shoes. Uh, so, uh, but, but yes, uh, we want as, as much uh, positive publicity as we can possibly get for our program year round because we want to stay relevant and we want to be the cool place to be. And when there's a conversation, uh, regardless of where it is, and, and they're talking about football heat around here, we want to be the, the conversation they have and we want them talking about us. Okay, Gregory Hall, go ahead. Hey, Mac, you've mentioned since you've come back here about wanting to be too deep uh, at every single position. I was just curious with specifics to the defensive line with how young you guys were last year and bringing in some, some top recruits, what you kind of, how you see the defensive line competition playing out this spring. Gregory, that may be the, the most fun to watch. Those guys were so quick this morning. You got K.J. Binkley back out there. You've got uh, Javari Ritzy out there, and he's so quick. He's running around. You've got uh, Keyshawn Silver. Uh, and then you got uh, Miles Murphy's completely changed his body. And, and that's along with everybody else that played. Uh, so we're, we have a chance to have uh, as good a competition at that position as I think I've ever been around. Uh, because we can actually get to uh, two or maybe even three deep if the guys play uh, up to their ability. So I'm, I'm so excited about that position moving forward because we've, we've been knocked around some up front. Uh, we've been manhandled when people could really run the ball and keep it away from us. And, and um, I'm, I'm hoping that that front three or front four will be able to, to do a lot better job stopping the run. But I think that was the, uh, the most uh, eye-popping thing about practice this morning is that position has changed probably the most over our two years of any other. All right, Brendan Marks, go ahead, sir. Hey, Mac, yeah, I just wanted to follow up on Greg's question. I know you had mentioned some of the across the board, offensive and defensive and special teams goals, but beyond the defensive line, what are some of the position groups that you're hoping to gain a little bit more clarity these next couple of weeks? Um, we, um, we thought, Brendan, that uh, it really, really helped Eugene Asante playing in the bowl game. It gave him great confidence. He showed us he's good enough. Uh, and at the same time, uh, he, he looked better today than I've ever seen him because he comes in with much more confidence, and we've got more confidence in him. And then you've got guys like uh, Cedric Gray. You've got guys like Kadri Jackson. Uh, and then you've got your young ones. We moved East, Ethan West out to outside backer. Uh, but you, you, you bring in um, Power Eccles. You bring in um, Ra Ra Dilworth. So you, you're, you've, you've got guys there. You, you've got, uh, and I may even miss something. I don't have anything here in front of me. If I do, you all help me with it so I don't get a mom mad at me. Uh, but but you, you've got uh, Gimmel and Eugene who have played. And they've played enough, and we, they're knowns. Everybody else is an unknown at that position. So it is wide open. And, and again, we, I, I, I've talked at nauseam about being too deep. And I know I do it every time I stand up here. Uh, but that, that's for us to get to this point we're talking about, where everybody expects us to get, uh, we've got to be too deep. And we can't expect a sprained ankle with one of our starters to detour us from winning a ball game. So... Uh, that's the biggest thing this spring. I've even told our, our coaches, I don't care how much Jeremiah Gimmel plays this spring. He's played a lot of football since I've been here. God, he's played about every snap for, for two full years. Uh, so let him play some, but get him out. And, and let's look at other people because we need other people to step up. And, and even the secondary. 
Our safeties played better at the end of the year, but we were inconsistent at safety some during the year. Uh, teams that are winning in college football uh, are, are winning that 80-20 ball. The 50-50 ball's gone. So the outside with your corners. Uh, I asked uh, uh, Joe Sabatini, one of our, our graduate assistants this morning, what was the biggest difference you saw? He said, boy, those corners look good. And he, he works with Lonnie with the wide receivers. So uh, I just think we, we look better, but those, those linebackers uh, we'll, we'll see more on Saturday, but they, they need to come on. Uh, I think the backup offensive line, obviously the running backs are an unknown. And Ty Chapman looked really good. He's real fast. But that's, that's an unknown. So the, the running backs, uh, uh, probably the backup offensive line and the, the backup linebackers, I would think, would be the, the things that we've got to improve in the most. Okay, let's swing over to Chapel Fowler. Hey, Coach. Um, I was wondering, how did kind of your goals, uh, your expectations for the early enrollees change, given how crazy the past year has been for them? You mentioned they haven't really played for a year at all. Chapel, it's a great question. I didn't even think about it till one of them came over to me afterwards. I, I think I was standing there with Power and, and Ra Ra and, and maybe DeAndre Boykins, and they said, you know, Coach, we hadn't played for a year. And I'm going to bring it up in the staff meeting here in a minute because you just don't think about those things. Our life has changed so much in the last year. I never thought about they didn't play in games. They didn't have spring practice. They had nothing. So these guys, some of them don't even have a great place to lift. So we've seen a, a lot of improvement, Chapel, in their bodies and their strength since they've been here. But I think a lot of it's because they, they didn't have that for the last year. Uh, so I think we'll see them uh, improve more than anything through this year because the, of the amount of time they've missed. But we also had so many freshmen last year that we, we thought when you were looking at a K.J. Binkley, hadn't played any. When you look at a, a Desmond Evans, we, we wanted him to go through spring practice or, or summer work. And so many of these guys, when you start looking at them, they, they haven't had any work at all. So uh, our spring practice is valuable not only for those 12 and Ty Chandler, those 13, but that entire class last year has never had a spring practice, the early enrollees last year or the guys in the summer. So we think we can make huge strides uh, through this spring. So it's, it's probably the most important spring I've ever been around. 